Okay, so lead code practice time. Still two goals. Um, the first one is to see how to solve this problem properly, uh, find a solution for it, and uh, put in some solid code there. And the other purpose for this video is to see how we are going to solve this problem in an interview. Like how, what, 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 what is the process during an interview we need to follow? Suppose we are given this kind of question. So let's get started. So remember, always uh, the first step in a coding interview is to um, uh, understand the question and also ask clarification questions if there is something unclear to you. And at the same time, think about some edge cases that is uh, that are that are pretty special and that you need to take special care of. So let's read this problem. It says, okay, nested list weight sum. What is that? So you're given a nested list of integers, nested list, and each element is either an integer or a list of a, a list whose elements may also be integers or other lists. Okay, the depth of an integer is a number of lists that it is inside of. For example, the nested list this one has each integer's value set to its depths. Okay, so return the sum of each integer in nested list multiplied by its depths. Okay, so let's take a look at the maybe the second example. Let's see. So we have the something like this. Um, so the depths of one is one because it's within. It's the first layer actually, and the depths of four is two because it's within. Uh, it's a list within another list, and the depth of six is three because it's within a list within that is within another list that is within another list. All right, so um, so for this one we are going to return one times one plus four times two plus six times three, which is twenty seven. All right, so uh, I think it looks pretty clear to me, and also remember. Uh, let's see some constraints to see if there is any um, edge cases we need to take special care of. So it says that the nested list dot length is between one to fifty, and the value of each integer is between minus one hundred to one hundred, and the maximum depth of any integer is less than or equal to fifty. All right. So what I can see is uh, suppose the nested list it contains only one list and uh, the list uh, is empty but I wouldn't say it's a it's too I don't I don't think it's too special which can be taken care of by uh, the general solution so the next part um, after we clarify uh, we clarify what the question is asking us to do the next step is to find the solution so in this part, you it is more about uh, you thinking about ideas how to solve this problem, and uh, doing some back and forth communication, explaining how it's gonna work, and also um, do some runtime space analysis on top of that. So you don't need to worry about uh, if it's a too difficult question. Feel free to start with something brute force and then think about more of my solution after that. Uh, so uh, don't worry if you cannot find the most optimal solution uh, at, at the very beginning. So let's see for this one. Uh, I would say this is a this could be solved by either BFS or DFS. So um, so during DFS or BFS, uh, we also pass in the depths of the current list. And uh, for the DFS, if we go DFS fun uh, go the DFS way, the DFS function is going to return uh, return the uh, is going to return uh, what the output is asking us to do, to to return. <laughs> okay, so I, I know it's it might be a, not a very clear um, uh, clear thing, but for the DFS function, the return value is going to be the sum of each number times uh, its steps. So the runtime for this one uh, is DFS. Uh, we are only going to each uh, 
we are going to visit each number uh, once. So it is going to be linear, uh, which means uh, so n is equal to the number of integers within the within the list, nested list. So um, let's get started. Um, the next part is about coding. So in the coding part, um, make sure that uh, you don't run out of time. So speed is definitely something to be considered. And also uh, we need to care about your code correctness and also your code readability. So let's get started. So for this one, we will call it, uh, okay, so let's see. So it defined the interface, which is called nested integer, and it posed it, it pose some APIs for us to do, for us to use, is integer, if it's integer, then get integer, set integer, add the integer, and the get the list, okay? So what we need to do is, um, sum is equal to dfs uh, and return uh, i would say for this one we are going to pass two things one is the nested list and uh, the other thing is um so the other thing is the current depths of it so the depths i would say it is one and finally we return some and then we define a helper function for which is called DFS. It's going to return integer, um, and we pass in the list and also the depths of it. So we are going to go through um, the all the all the things within the nested integer. So let's see, uh, so nested is integer guy integer, set integer add, get list. So this one, we are going to call this one. This one is going to return the nested list that is, that this nested list holds, okay. So for, uh, so first of all, we are going to define sum is equal, uh, we need to define a, uh, Okay, so let's see. So first of all, if sum is equal to zero, uh, and the nested list, nested integer, um, uh, let's say integer is gonna be, so, so it's going to be nested list dot get list okay so if um integer dot is integer then what we need to do is some um, plus equal to depths uh, times um taps times integer dot get integer otherwise uh, what we need to do is um, else uh, or you just continue otherwise it is going it's not a integer which means it is a nested list then we are going to call sum plus equal to DFS uh, what's that DFS, um, okay, so it's integer and depths uh, plus one. And uh, finally, we just return a sum. Okay, so that's mostly about code. And uh, let's step into the next part, which is the last part during interview is about testing. So for testing, uh, usually it goes through test case um, manually, explain how this piece of code is gonna work. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you check the correctness of the code. Uh, and, also, and also, if everything works, then uh, you need to come up with some other test cases to try to have good test coverage. So let's take example two. 
So we have 1, 4, 6. So we are going to call DFS on top of this list and uh, that is is 1. So we iterate through uh, all the things within this next list. So the first one, it is a integer. So sum is equal to 1 times 1. So sum is equal to 1 now. And we just continue. And then uh, the next element is a list. So we are going to call the DFS on top of this list and the uh, depth is equal to two. And then within it, sum is, the within it, the first element is four. So it is sum is equal to four times two, which is eight. And we see the third one, uh, sorry, we see the second element within this list is a list. So we call DFS on top of it again. So for this one, it only contains one integer, uh, which means we are going to have sum as six times three, which is 18. And it is going to return 18. And uh, when the DFS return, um, remember that the, that the layer set sitting on top of this, currently the sum is eight. So, so now sum is equal to eight plus 18. Uh, which is uh, 26 and then it returns um, and remember the very top layer uh, for the DFS function the sum is equal to 1 so 1 times 24 26 and it is and sum is equal to 20, 27 and then we return 27 uh, at, at the end so I would say this looks good regarding the test coverage um, I would say um, definitely uh, set up some take task cases that uh, include both list and uh, integer in it other uh, other than that uh, i don't see i don't see anything that special we need to take special care of um sure let's give it a shot let's so it's some compile arrow uh let's see so it is cannot find symbol nested list. Uh, okay, so this one it is passing us nested list. Oh, okay. Sorry, I uh, I think uh, I think it should be this. It should be just uh nested list because it is passing us the nested list so for so it is passing the nested list and we go through everything in it if integer is a it is like this then we plus equal to that otherwise some plus equal to dfs uh so this is a okay so integer dot get list it should be here all right now i should be good and then let's submit it okay so it works fine yeah so that's pretty much it about this uh, coding question so if you like this video find it a bit helpful uh, please give me a thumb up and i will see you next time thanks for watching